ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ತರ್ಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ದೇವತ ಪ್ರಭಯ್ಯ ದಿವ್ಯನ್ ಪ್ರಮುಖೋ ಸೃಜ ತೇಹಾರ ತೇ ಆಹಾರ್ ಸೂರ್ದೇವ್ಯಂತೋ ವಿಶ್ರಿಷ್ಟಾಂ ತಾಂ ಪ್ರಭಾ ಮಹ Translation purport by Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai He then created the chief demigods who were shining with the glory of goodness He dropped before them the effulgent form of daytime and the demigods sportingly took possession of it Purport Demons were demons were born from the creation of night and the demigods were born from the creation of day In other words, demons, like the Ekshas and Rakshasas, are born of the quality of ignorance. And demigods are born of the quality of goodness. Text 23 Devo Adevan Jagannataha Srajati Smati Lolupan Taenam Lolupataya ಮೈಥುನಾಯ ಅಭಿಪೇಧಿರೇ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ದನ್ ಗೇವ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ದ ಡಿಮೆನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಟಕ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇ ವೆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಫಾಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಕ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ವೆರ್ ಟೂ ಲಸ್ಟ್ ಫುಲ್ ದೇ ಅಪ್ರೋಚ್ ಥಿಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕೋಪುಲೇಷನ್ ಪರ್ಪಟ್ ಸೆಕ್ಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಪೀಟೆಡ್ ದ ಡಿಮೆನ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಫಾಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಕ್ಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ದ ಮೋರ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಡಿಸೈರ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸೆಕ್ಸ್ ದ ಮೋರ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಮೋಟೆಡ್ ಟು ದ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೆಮಿಗಾರ್ಡ್ಸ್ the more one is inclined to enjoy sex the more is degraded to the level of demoniac life text 24 tato hasan sabhagavan asure nirapatra pai anviyamanas tarasa kudho bhitaha parapata Vashyapul Brahma first laughed at their stupidity but finding the shameless asuras close upon him he grew indignant and ran in great haste out of fear sexually inclined demons have no respect even for their father the best policy for a saintly father like brahma or is to leave is to leave such demoniac sons <coughs> so after creating darkness or night and the yakshas and rakshasas were born as the son of brahma he then created the chief demigods who were shining with the glory of goodness he dropped before them the effulgent form of daytime and the demigods supportingly took possession of it and that is how the demons were born from the night or darkness demigods were in control of the daytime and the night was given to the yakshas rakshasas who are the demons adhevan devah lord brahma adhevan demons and they were so lustful these demons that is a characteristic of a demon that they want to have copulation they approached brahma himself for copulation 
And Prabhupada explains that sex life is a background of material existence. Here also it is repeated that demons are very fond of sex life. The more one is free from desire for sex, the more is promoted to the level of the demigods. The more one is inclined to enjoy sex, the more he is degraded to the level of demoniac life. So, <clears throat> we can see that the different ways in which sex is treated by the demigods, by the demons or those who are combination of both like those who are on this earth most of them having demonic qualities and having sura qualities also so how sex is being uh, perceived in all these aspects sex life as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita according to Krishna there is a purpose for sex life which is to create progeny and therefore Krishna says I am sex life if it is according to the principles of Dharma so except for that one particular meaning to sex life every other meaning that is people carry in their head is purely a mental concoction and mental concoction means you make something out of it then what it is really meant to be according to the design of the Lord so every other treatment of sex is adharma now in the absolute sense also this sex is there only in this material world Prabhupada says in one place that in the spiritual world there is no sexual intercourse and if you go to the animal life you will see sexual intercourse is also a way of that is a no, that is quite prominent prominent in the sense that compared to that is the meaning of relationship intimacy and that is how in, even in the animal life progeny is created even though the family is not bonded in the animal life still the mother has attachment to the baby all these kind of things are there even in animal life So, it is only from these scriptures that we understand actually what is the position of sex in life. Vaishnavas understand, anyone who is interested in pure devotion service, they understand that sex is actually a trap for the living entities to be imprisoned in this material world. Therefore, Prabhupada says that it is a background of material existence. And unless one is free from that, one cannot get liberated out of this bodily concept of life. And it is sex that actually anchors a, the soul to the bodily concept. To the bodily concept of life. I am this body. So except for that perception where the Lord has given us a perception of what is sex, everything else should be considered as anartha, unnecessary, unwanted ideas. Anartha means that which is not required, you think it is required. For instance, other than progeny, actually one does not require sexual activities. Sexual activity is different, conjugal relationship is different. 
the conjugal relationship in the heavenly planets is very fine the conjugal relationship when it grossifies towards animal life that is sex people misunderstand that in the material world they think that conjugal relationship is meant for sex it is not it is the other way around conjugal relationship is primary and one of the duties on one of the expansions of conjugal relationship is progeny to this fine understanding is very essential to differentiate between sex and conjugal relationship conjugal rasa is there in the original spiritual world the spiritual world also this conjugal relationship husband wife you know lakshmi narayana radha and krishna conjugal relationship is different and this it need not necessarily be connected to sexual pleasure sexual pleasure even modern science has differentiated between relational pleasure in conjugal life and sexual pleasure scientifically what happens in the brain what happens in the body what happens in the chemicals they have separated it so much so that they themselves say that when because the science the psychology studies you know human problems psychological problems they study why marriages fail why has been in life life does not last why it breaks away all these kind of things they analyze they do lot of research they do lot of you know studies and then they come to some conclusions so they they also have put their mind into this relationship value of relationship versus value of sex in 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 married life and they themselves have now come to conclusion that actually when there is fulfillment of relationship then there is minimization minimum requirement of sex that means the real need is not sex the real need is relationship man human relationship that's the real need as far as bodily material need is concerned materially they have analyzed and they also analyzed that those who have that emphasized given important to sex then their relationship largely breaks one way or the other because their expectation cannot last forever everything becomes boring nothing will go on forever even few day few few years it will not last so that's why here propat says that the more one is free from desire for sex the more is promoted to the level of the demigods at the demigod there is very fine conjugal pleasure without having to not necessarily to have gross sex like this it described in the bhagavatam itself beautiful gardens beautiful dances beautiful music all these kind of things are finer rasa their sensibilities are much finer and they enjoy that but in the modern times as we are progressing towards kali yuga decades after decade even in our own life we can see that giving importance to gross sex has increased therefore the quality of life has decreased quality of grahastha life has decreased 
it is not only in this country in the western country also in the western countries also the, you can see a graph moving towards more and more diverses it's not that you know west was always bad and it was you know always diverse rates are very high they didn't have any family unity no it's not true historically if you see even the west women men they had uh, you know some kind of a um, social uh, taboos and social restrictions all these things were there even in the west and it is over the time the last few decades this whole idea of uh, free association of male and female has created that kind of a situation today where cross sex has become so important it all depends what we think the society creates a concussion in every member of this every citizen is it's put in every citizen's head that this is so important this pleasure is so important and if this pleasure is not included in your married life your married life is finished you will feel some vacuum you will feel that it doesn't you know there's no meaning in married life even in our own past and just few 50 50 years back you see the even the our grandfathers great grandfathers all those people their married life was actually almost like how you know prabhupad taught us to live they only they they the wife served the husband they had very nice relationship everything but in when it came to sex it was for procreation and it was considered when it is for procreation it was considered to be very sanctified which is a right attitude according to bhagavad gita so there is a sanctified value to sex you can say there is a divine value to sex if it is done in divine order of the lord the moment we concoct it then all kinds of sin is committed therefore we have to deal with this matter of in our perception in our perception what is the value of sex in life undo all the concocted super values that have been given to sex 99% of the sexual pleasure is all concoction total mental concoction concoction means what it is all in our head we have given value to it we think it is most enjoyable no as i said you separate sex from conjugal yes conjugal is a big maya is a very fine uh, rasa that attachment just a gross sex alone does not create attachment you see animals are not attached they are having sex procreation is going on but they don't have family they don't have all these things when it comes to human form the same thing is there but you see some there is a family there is all the, that means relationship is prominent you see the higher levels of evolution of consciousness there is more relationship in the human beings ultimately we have to awaken all these relationship that we have in a human society because these are the vocabulary for us to live properly in the spiritual world in the spiritual world we need to understand all these things and live respectfully according to the directions of the lord abuse of our free will is what creates all these kind of things therefore the most important thing in spiritual life is to have control over our free will the free will itself is free then what is the question of controlling free will this what we consider as free will in this material world freely i can do i do what my body urges that is free will no that is not free will that is you are uh, becoming a victim of the demands of the biological demands you are becoming a victim of social demands so when we become servant of social demands false ego when you become Uh, 
servant of the biological demand because that's not the soul and we will according to the demands of the body demands of the mind demands of the false ego we use our free will but actually it's not free will you are forced to act free will is that of the soul therefore free will has to control our willing today we have conditioned willing when we are embodied we have conditioned willing when we live in a society social social pressure is there there is conditional conditional willing just like somebody picks up 100 rupees from your pocket and tells you please you please tell that i voluntarily given you first you pick it up and then you brainwash him to think that ah, i voluntarily gave so all our willing is like that if you don't use our free will so there's a difference between free will and willing without resistance i should will that is not free will so to exercise our free will we need spiritual knowledge because free will is that of the soul so in the material world nobody is actually using their free will they are simply rubber stamping the urges of gross to subtle urges of the mind body system the social system this is how it is nobody is free like that it's only devotees who understand i am not the body therefore i am not the bodily urges i am not actually you know a real eternal not a member of this world i don't have to cater to all the demands of the society that comes upon me the pushings of the society pushings of the body pushings of the mind no i have my own guru sadhu shastra knowledge is there to exercise my free will so in other words constantly the, the a devotee understands the value of his soul's free will and accordingly controls the willing that happens from the mind body system for that we have to become free from this concoctions because if these concoctions are there the false beliefs will be there this gives me pleasure you create false pleasure beliefs and then you are stuck there because it is your own pleasure potency but you believe that this is the way it should be expressed then you get stuck and instead of thinking that your pleasure potency your pleasure is what actually it's a soul's pleasure that you are enjoying like the camel eating thorns but you give credit to the thorns in the same way give credit to varieties of expressions and this is pleasure this is pleasure and that is exactly called attachment you attach pleasure to different expressions in this material world material world or matter itself does not give any pleasure so with this fundamental understanding the devotee who is aspiring to engage in pure devotional service gives up this faith or the belief that any matter or any matter material combination gross or subtle material energy put together that none of the combinations is actually the contributor of pleasure it is coming from the soul why should i give credit so become detached from that once you become detached then you become attached to the positive which is the way the lord says you have a perception of what sex is according to what the lord says and if you don't have that function it is out of your world it doesn't exist for me na brahmachari is like that doesn't exist for him at all it doesn't there because i have no function of that why should i deal with it at all that is a issue don't have to deal with it that is my that is that is what i should try to choose ignore it no no how can i ignore it it is such a forceful thing it is such a force ha ah, that force is because of concussion when you ignore it 
you will see that concussion will go. Moment you ignore it, value comes down. By concussion, you have raised its pressure value. Once you ignore it, when you ignore something, why do you ignore something? Something has no value, you ignore. So when you ignore something, its value will come down. Value will come down means concussion will come down. The harassment from that force will be, from the urge will come down. And all these things are very easily achieved by nicely hearing Hare Krishna Mahamantra. This spiritual knowledge all will come. The lower gunas will go. Then higher gunas come over. As you say here, it is directly connected to Tamoguna. Sex. Directly connected to Tamoguna. So you raise your guna to Sattuguna. Then you will see all these inclinations will go away. All these forces will go away. You have to believe that. It is not etched in stone. If today, you know, my heart is after lust, it's not etched in stone. It will all change. If you, if you raise to Satoguna, it will change. Something else will become natural to you. Now something is natural and you think this is part and parcel of life. It can never get out. That's called attachment. Attachment means, oh, how can I give up sex life? It's so important. Very important. That kind of feeling is generated. That's called attachment. That feeling should go, it can go only by knowledge, by spiritual knowledge, real knowledge. And real knowledge can come only if you hear the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. You chant and hear offenselessly, so that is association with all knowledge. Krishna is all knowledge. Infinite knowledge, right? On your tongue, on your ears. You take him inside, all these things will become come in proper perspective. It will fall in proper perspective. And when spiritual knowledge comes, then these urges can very easily be handled without turmoil, without, uh, without feeling a sense of attachment. So therefore, this is a very important thing. The more one is free from the desires for sex, the more he is promoted to the level of demigods, and the more one is inclined to enjoy sex, the more is degraded to the level of demoniac life. So here particularly Prabhupada, this, this verse is about copulation, how they approach Brahma for copulation. So it's particularly about gross sex. So we differentiate between gross sex and conjugal love. So it's a, a super anartha. Sex is a super anartha means it, it is, it's only required in the material world. It's only existing in the material world. And it's like a hook, just like you see a bait. You catch a fish with an earthworm. In the same way, this is a creation of this material body-mind system. And it is designed in such a way that by the Lord's expert creation, that chemically it gives a sense of a different momentary pleasure and that is actually the bait and you get hooked on to it and with that come so many obligations so many things come along with that one simple thing called for sex and in the Kali Yuga if you take if somebody is interested in spiritual life then if he tries to Let's say two things. One, you understand that sex is so transient. What is it? In few days, all these things. It's all familiarity breeds contempt. And it is all chemical thing. Then, the higher purpose of married life is for enjoying conjugal rasa. Acha, okay, now I should remain a brahmacharya or I should have become a grahastha. Maybe, you know, okay, I understand. This is all, gross sex is all, you know... Really anartha, super anartha. But what about this subtle conjugal relationship? Actually speaking, subtle conjugal relationship you can't have nowadays because all women are like men only. Because they're all educated, they're all think like men, all the good qualities, fine qualities that actually you need for a woman, the shyness, this thing doesn't exist. So finally it will be like marrying another man. 
So you please decide what you want. <laughs> so it's a it's a very hopeless situation materially also now. Neither can you get proper conjugal rasa. And when it comes to gross sex, it is nothing which is only, you know, it's only initially it is it is enticing. Afterwards you get fed up of that. So one who understands all these things very intelligently, he'll keep away and be happy single. Any questions? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, you said that uh, the knowledge, the realization, uh, real knowledge of uh, how, how of coming out, um, it's really a knowledge to understand uh, that will come by chanting Hare Krishna. So then, uh, what is the uh, main main purpose of reading Prabhupada books? Because actually, uh, any realization has to come in, it has come from the heart. It's mm-hmm. revealed to you. It is not that... Uh, so then, uh, what is the purpose? Means, uh, how do we... What is the purpose of reading? Yes, yes. Ma'am. Reading is to trigger, is to assist you to bring out that knowledge. All this knowledge, actually, the essence of all the knowledge is already existing. Detachment matter, knowledge exists, attachment to Krishna exists, idea of devotion service exists, you are a servant exists, Krishna, you are a part and parcel exists, all inside it exists. Then, all these different kinds of um, detailed expressions, this Leela, that Leela, you know, the Leela of how Brahma created, huh? that knowledge doesn't exist in you. That knowledge you have to get from outside, but the essence of that is there in this in, in every atma the essence the principal knowledge now these leelas they trigger this values inside this basic knowledge you are servant of krishna krishna is god he is a creator brahma is subordinate all are subordinate to him there is only one ishwara supreme ishwara these things you it it will awaken that knowledge in your heart now chanting hare krishna mahamantra will automatically awaken these basic things so when these basic things are awakened, when you read all these things, it will go and fit well, it will corroborate well, and jnana becomes vijnana. So that is very important that all these, whatever you read, along with chanting, along with, you know, even hearing these verses itself is also hearing. In this hearing one verse of Bhagavatam, is no different from chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Shravanam Kirtanam. Shravanam means not only Hare Krishna chanting. Bhagavatam verses, Bhagavad Gita verses, Krishna's own words, you hear again and again. That is that will bring both bring forth the knowledge. Now you'll say, what is a if if hearing is enough, then why should we read? Reading is hearing. Reading is hearing. Subtle hearing is reading. So, Shravanam is a must. And Shravanam is the process for descending process of knowledge. All knowledge you get from that. In different ways you get it. But very quick, because a particular medicine is Hare Krishna chanting, then even what you read you will grasp. If you chant and hear nicely, you will understand this very fast, ten times faster, hundred times faster, you will, this subject matter will go inside. Any Grandarachimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Jagat Guru Shila Prabhupada ki jai.